Number 15 then from the 2018 Advanced Higher Maths, Denmark's as the art towards the end integration question. It's in two parts. In the first part, use integration by parts to find this. Then obviously when it comes to that first order linear differential equation there, you can expect that to pop up somewhere for the final seven marks. But anyway, integration by parts, that just comes back from the product rule for differentiation. Pick two parts here then. Which part will you differentiate? Which part will you integrate? Well, it's obvious. Differentiate the x, that'll whittle it away. Integrate the sign. Now you can put the bits at the side, but in the end you're just going to put them back into a pattern here. So integrate first, leave the x alone, integrate sign, that goes back up to cos 3x, but it'll have to be negative, and since it's a function of a function, also divide by the inner derivative, so that's negative a third of cos 3x. Right, that part's been done, so that's going to transfer over. Now differentiate this one, that goes down to 1, so that transfers back over as negative a third cos 3x. Now at this point, you could just go straight to the answer, but I'll tidy it up first. Negative a third of x cos 3x, negative negative, plus, and take the third out of that, a third of the integral of cos 3x. So. Ah, this always happens, doesn't it? You just have to keep copying that first bit down. Now, cos goes back to sine, and it's positive, but divide within the derivative of 3, which means you've now got a ninth of that, and don't forget, plus c. Part B, then. Hence, find the particular solution of this given that x equals pi when y is 0, just run it that way. So you've got a first order linear power 1 differential equation to solve, to get the particular solution. Now when it's in that form, and it's been reduced to a standard form, the standard form of dy by dx plus some function of x times y equals some other function of x. When it's in that form, this side can be resolved by multiplying everything by whatever it takes to form the result for the exact use of the product rule when differentiation. And that multiplying factor is e to the integral of whatever that part is. So that's the first part. Find the integrating factor. Well, since it's a negative 2 upon x, I'll just do that first of all. So if p of x, although you don't need to give them names, is negative 2 upon x, that means I'm looking for the integral of, I'll just put the negative 2 outside, it's just dx over x, which of course is going to be negative 2 ln of x. Popping that inside, that's ln of 1 over x squared. Yes, there is a plus c, there is a plus c, but I'm just going to find this integrating factor now, which is e to the power of that. So if there was a plus c, that would separate into e to this, times e to the just a constant, that's just a number, and when you multiply it's all going to cancel out. But that's the first part. Find the integrating factor. So that reduces down to inverse 1 upon x squared. Now usually you just pop straight in with 1 over x squared y equals the integral of that. I think I'll just write down what happens next. It's 1 over x squared dy by dx, Multiplying that minus 2 over x cubed y, but that'll pop that down to x when you multiply everything by 1 over x squared. And there you are, back at the beginning, because the next step is, that's what you would get if you differentiated 1 upon x squared times y. Now we'll just go in with this part then. So 1 upon x squared times y equals the integral of this side. That's integrating both sides, because that would just undo that differentiation and put it back to where it was. Sine 3x dx. And you know what that comes to. That comes to, there it all is, negative one third of x cos 3x plus one ninth of sine 3x. But don't forget there is a plus c push that up out the way there, because now that I have to find c, I'm going to pop in these conditions, 
I don't really want to have it in here messing up the flow of this solution. I'd rather find it separately at the side. So I'll pop it up here then. So y is 0, so that first term is just 0, when x is pi. So that's negative pi upon 3, and that'll be cos 3 pi. That'll be plus a ninth of sine 3 pi, whoops, plus c. So it's all numbers. Now, cos 3 pi and sine 3 pi, they'll be exact values. Just think of the graphs of those. Sine graph. 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi comes to 0. Cosine graph. 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi comes to negative 1. So that means 0 is equal to pi upon 3 plus c. So c is negative pi upon 3. Now we can pop it all together. 1 upon x squared y equals negative 1 upon 3x cos 3x plus 1 ninth of sine 3x minus pi upon 3. So finally y will be, now it just depends on much want to tidy it up, it'll be negative 1 third of x cubed cos 3x plus 1 ninth of x squared sine 3x minus pi upon 3 x squared which they'd probably just take as an answer anyway but I might tidy that up I could have left that x squared out of it I might just tidy that up but you don't need to and take out the common factors and take out the worst of the fractions so you could just have left that x squared outside with a 9 underneath which means that sine x is left in its own so it's just sine 3x that cos x will have to be 3x cos x, whoops, but it's minus minus 3x cos 3x, and that final part would have to be minus 3 pi. I'll put that, but they probably just want that.